Mesdames, Mademoiselles et Messieurs, bienvenue dans l'Université Polytechnique de Bucarest. C'est un plaisir pour moi pour avoir l'occasion de cette occasion organisée par l'Université Polytechnique de Bucarest et aussi l'ambassade de, de Tunisie en Roumanie. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for coming. I speak in Romanian and in French because some uh, more, more people speak in French, but uh, Uh, some ambassadors don't speak French. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in our university. It's a great pleasure for me for, for organize with, uh, with the Tunisian uh, embassy in Romania this event in our university. It's a great pleasure for us to for, for, um, uh, invite here and uh, uh, together with us Uh, the member of the diplomatic court, and thank you so much, uh, ambassadors, for coming here uh, with, uh, with us today. Uh, our university opened the door in the last period uh, in front of the, of the diplomatic court, and not only, and uh, we, uh, we start a special program uh, for present different country in, uh, in front of our students, in front of our, our community, the largest technical community, the largest Uh, academic community in the country, more than 33,000 students in, in our university and more 3,000 uh, employees. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much uh, for, for this, uh, this present. Thank you so much to the students for coming here. Merci beaucoup pour votre, pour votre présence ici en notre en ces événements, en spécial pour, pour l'étudiant. C'est un plaisir pour nous. Pour nous. Uh, C'est un plaisir pour avoir le, le réunion, uh, donc la première réunion uh, en cette année avec, uh, avec Madame Ambassadeur. Merci beaucoup, vous, Madame Ambassadeur, pour, uh, pour votre, uh, pour votre uh, uh, présence ici avec l'équipe de l'ambassade uh, dans le nom de Tunisie. C'est une occasion pour présenter uh, la culture, uh, la de Tunisie présenter les problèmes d'étudiants et je veux remercier aussi notre collègue de, 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 de bureau d'émigration en Roumanie pour présent ici euh, et pour répondre dans le, pour le, en front de, de l'étudiant euh, avec nous et avec notre collègue de, de département de, des affaires étrangères de, de notre université. Euh, je veux inviter Madame Ambassadrice pour euh, parler en face euh, dans ce réunion et après euh, je veux inviter les autres euh, les autres euh, collègues euh, ici. Je veux euh, je veux euh, mentionner le, le présence de le, de le directeur de l'agence universitaire de la francophonie en Roumanie, notre collègue et très bon ami Monsieur Ketata, euh, qui est ici euh, dans notre université toujours parce que nous avons beaucoup de, de projets avec, euh, avec euh, AOF. Madame Ambassadrice, je, je vous en prie. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur, Monsieur Costoy. Monsieur Costoy, recteur de l'Université Polytechnique de Bucarest, Monsieur le vice-recteur, Monsieur Dali, Monsieur Mohamed Keta, directeur régional à l'Agence universitaire de la francophonie, chers représentants de l'inspectorat général de l'immigration, Madame Laura Théodore, Monsieur Ounut Sirdei, Monsieur Valentine Trandefir, honorables enseignants, professeurs, étudiants, excellences et collègues ambassadeurs et représentants du corps diplomatique, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers présents, Permettez-moi tout d'abord de, de vous présenter mes sincères voeux pour le nouvel an. Je vous souhaite plein de succès, réussite, prospérité pour vous tous. Je vous présente aussi mes chaleureux remerciements pour M. Costoy, pour sa disponibilité, son appui et, euh, et sa collaboration afin d'organiser cette journée d'information au profit des étudiants tunisiens et internationaux. Je tiens également à remercier chaleureusement les services de l'immigration pour leur collaboration en coordination avec les services de l'ambassade tout au long de l'année et aussi pour leur acceptation de participer activement à cette journée d'information dédiée aux étudiants étrangers et spécialement en fait pour les Tunisiens. Il convient de rappeler 
à cet égard que l'organisation de cette journée coïncidait avec la célébration de la fête de la révolution tunisienne des jeunes du 17 décembre au 14 janvier et en même temps avec la célébration du 56e anniversaire des relations diplomatiques tuniso-romaines. Sachant que la première signature d'un accord était le 16 décembre 1963, c'était le premier accord diplomatique entre les deux pays. À cet effet, je ne peux passer cette occasion sans me féliciter du niveau excellent de relations traditionnelles d'amitié et de coopération qui lie notre pays avec la Roumanie. Cette relation qui est basée sur la confiance, l'amitié et l'ambition. Et la preuve de ça, c'est la collaboration euh, conjointement de cette journée avec, euh, avec l'Université Polytechnique. La coopération scientifique universelle est un, est un axe très important dans nos relations. Je saisis cette occasion, occasion pour me féliciter de la présence d'un nombre considérable d'étudiants tunisiens en Roumanie qui s'élève à presque 900 étudiants. Ce nombre est réparti en majorité entre les villes Bucarest, Cluj, Timisoara et Yash Arad dans des spécialités différentes, euh, médecine, pharmacie et des spécialités techniques. En effet, nous avons un bon nombre d'étudiants inscrits dans cette prestigieuse université qui s'élève à peu près à 80 ans. 80 étudiants. Monsieur le recteur, Excellence, chers enseignants étudiants, chers présents, les difficultés que rencontrent les étudiants internationaux et spécialement les étudiants tunisiens sont diversifiées, qui peuvent nuire parfois à l'accomplissement de leur cursus universitaire qui résulte du fait de l'ignorance des lois romaines en la matière. C'est l'objectif de l'organisation de, ce, de cette journée qui porte sur la réglementation de ces jours qui sera animée par l'équipe des services de l'immigration et suivie par une discussion directe avec les étudiants. Chers étudiantes et étudiants, je vous encourage de bien profiter de la qualité académique et scientifique de, de l'université polytechnique ainsi que tous les, toutes les autres, tous les autres établissements universitaires de la Roumanie. Monsieur le recteur, j'apprécie beaucoup les efforts remarquables déployés par votre établissement enseignant administration pour l'encadrement des étudiants étrangers inscrits dans votre établissement, y compris les Tunisiens, et le souci que vous portez pour leur intégration à leur vie étudiantine, en sachant que leur avenir et l'avenir de leur pays commencent par, par ici. Je rappelle les étudiants tunisiens qu'ils euh, qu pourront compter sur le soutien de l'ambassade tunisienne pendant leur année euh, universitaire. Donc, je ne saurais terminer sans réitérer mes remerciements à M. Costoy pour l'organisation de cette journée au sein de, euh, de l'établissement polytechnique. Je remercie M. Mohamed Kitat, le directeur régional de l'agence universitaire de la, de la francophonie, qui nous a honorés par sa participation. Aussi, mes chaleureux remerciements à toute l'équipe de l'immigration d'avoir accepté notre demande d'organiser ce séminaire et aussi pour leur disponibilité et leur effort afin d'offrir le maximum d'informations en la matière de ces jours pour aider les étudiants tunisiens et aussi internationaux de mieux réussir leur étude en Roumanie. Mes remerciements aussi également pour euh, toute l'équipe de l'ambassade et euh, l'équipe de l'Université Polytechnique, Madame Luciana, Madame, Madame Haddar, euh, pour l'organisation de cette, euh, cette journée, Madame Afef Boulamen, la diplomate de euh, l'ambassade. Chers étudiants, je suis certaine que vous allez euh, pro bien profiter de cette conférence et euh, je, vous, euh, je vous encourage. Euh, si vous avez des questions, si vous avez des soucis, vous avez c'est une chance et une occasion aujourd'hui d'avoir toute l'équipe de l'immigration avec vous ici. En fait, je vous remercie, je les remercie une autre fois pour leur disponibilité et bonne chance et bonne continuité. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Madame Ambassadrice. C'est vrai, le, notre relation, c'est très bon. C'est plus important pour l'étudiant. Je veux remercier encore une fois l'étudiant parce qu'il décide de venir ici dans, en Roumanie, dans notre université. Et ces réunions, c'est une occasion pour parler par, sur, le, 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 sur la vie de, de l'étudiant dans notre université, les problèmes en Roumanie. Et si est possible, parler aussi 
pour, euh, pour les autres étudiants, pour les, les, les collègues, et parler aussi avec, euh, avec euh, l'ambassade et avec notre collègue de, de l'immigration. Je veux inviter euh, M. Ketata pour adresser un une petit message en France de l'étudiant. Je vous en prie. D'amitié aussi. Domnule rector, doamnelor și domnilor, dragi colegi, dragi prieteni, dragi studentilor francofonii, mesdames, messieurs, messieurs, votre excellence, madame l'ambassadrice, messieurs les ambassadeurs, toutes les délégations diplomatiques, chers collègues, chers amis euh, francophones, chers étudiantes et chers étudiants, pour moi, c'est un grand plaisir d'être parmi vous cet après-midi et de participer en fait à cette journée ou à cette demi-journée d'information à la fois sur vos études, mais peut-être profiter aussi de vous donner quelques informations. D'abord, je représente l'Agence universitaire de la francophonie en Europe centrale et orientale. Vous avez bien choisi d'étudier en Roumanie. D'abord dans un très beau pays, mais également dans une très belle région. Et je dirais que c'est la plus belle région du monde. Ce n'est pas le Maghreb, comme vous pouvez l'imaginer. Ce n'est pas d'autres régions, mais l'Europe centrale. Et pour plusieurs raisons. La preuve, la qualité de l'accueil et de l'hospitalité, à la fois de la Roumanie, mais également de cette région, je pense que c'est une qualité légendaire. Et nous ne pouvons que remercier à la fois Monsieur le recteur, toute son équipe, mais également les autorités roumaines pour vous faciliter en fait, euh, la, les tâches en fait, au quotidien et pour que vous soyez en fait, au moins dans, cette, euh, dans ce pays-là, dans de bonnes conditions. Dans cette région, nous avons, euh, je dirais, une trentaine de pays dont je profite de saluer aussi les représentants du Turkménistan, qui font partie aussi de l'Europe centrale et orientale. Et bientôt, j'espère avoir le plaisir de vous visiter, parce que nous sommes sur les 30 pays de la région, nous sommes présents dans, une 30, dans 25, et il nous manque quelques pays, et nous allons euh, s'y atteler, en fait, cette année, pour vous attirer encore et encore vers la francophonie. Qu'est-ce que nous faisons en fait au quotidien Nous sommes au service des universités membres francophones et nous avons le nombre le plus important d'universités membres dans le monde, bien sûr après la France. Mais en France, il y a... la France, c'est là où on connaît le moins la francophonie. Je profite, il n'y a personne. Donc, c'est là où on connaît le moins la francophonie. Et après l'Europe de l'Ouest il y a l'Europe centrale et aujourd'hui, la présence de l'agence est dans 25 pays. Bien sûr, après, viendra d'autres régions, je dirais particulièrement l'Afrique, avec ses quatre régions, nord, ouest, central, sud, deux régions en Asie et deux régions dans les Amériques. Tout ce que nous faisons, bien sûr, avec nos universités membres, c'est particulièrement justement pour faciliter à nos étudiants un avenir, pour leur assurer un avenir meilleur. Un avenir meilleur, c'est-à-dire une employabilité immédiate. Pour nous, votre nationalité, je dirais, je ne dirais pas qu'elle n'est pas importante, mais pour nous, vous êtes des étudiants de l'université et particulièrement de Polytechnique à Bucarest, donc, vous êtes nos étudiants et nous sommes également à votre service, comme au service de tous les autres étudiants. Et sur plusieurs points, peut-être que vous ignorez, et je, je le regrette infiniment, que je n'ai pas le, toujours le temps d'aller vous voir régulièrement, votre employabilité, bien sûr, au-delà de ce que vous faites au sein de l'université, passe par le marché de l'emploi, nous facilitons votre insertion professionnelle par le cofinancement de stages en entreprise. La mobilité internationale dans n'importe quel pays francophone et particulièrement justement la France, la Suisse, etc., tous ces pays-là, avec une prise en charge totale. 
des mobilités doctorales. Et là, c'est une chance que vous êtes en Roumanie. C'est le seul pays au monde qui a choisi d'investir dans l'excellence scientifique par un programme qui s'appelle Eugène Ionesco. Tous les ans, nous accueillons dans ce beau pays en moyenne 80 chercheurs du monde entier, du monde francophone et particulièrement de la Tunisie, de l'Algérie et du Maroc. Comme par hasard, ces dernières années, ils occupent le podium. Pratiquement la moitié de ces bourses vont dans ces trois pays-là, sans oublier, bien sûr, notre Afrique, aussi avec une présence importante. Et je dirais, si je schématise en fait la carte du monde, dans toute l'Afrique, nous avons pratiquement 90 à 90% de candidats retenus qui viennent en Roumanie. Aujourd'hui, la Roumanie a reçu d'abord 12 années successives depuis 2006 et aujourd'hui, nous avons à peu près 900 chercheurs qui ont bénéficié de ce programme, 900 ambassadeurs de la Roumanie dans le monde parce que, général, ils viennent d'abord dans d'excellentes conditions pendant au moins trois mois et ils repartent avec une large diffusion de l'information concernant ce programme et ils font rayonner, je dirais, le, ce pays-là à travers le monde. Bien sûr, d'autres programmes aussi. Euh, ma thèse en 180 secondes. La Roumanie excelle tous les ans. Je dis bien excelle tous les ans et se retrouve toujours au podium de la, du concours international parmi les dix, euh, dix, candidats, dix candidats retenus après justement euh, tous, les concours interne, tous les concours nationaux qui se, qui se font dans le monde. Voilà quelques exemples de ce que nous faisons. Encore une fois, n'hésitez surtout pas. L'agence universitaire de la francophonie est à deux pas de votre université à pied. Il suffit de l'Anger, hein le Dembovitz, c'est bien ça, monsieur le recteur. Il suffit de le langer, vous êtes obligé de passer par... Et en plus, notre bâtiment, il est tellement bien allongé, vous avez l'impression de le voir de loin comme une mosquée. Donc, ça ne va pas vous, euh, euh, vous paraître euh, très, euh, très différent. Non, nous sommes en fait installés donc à Skito Magoreano. Un, non, ah non, ok, numéro un. Et donc vous êtes toujours le bienvenu. Je vous souhaite vraiment toute la réussite pour cet après-midi. Merci infiniment, Monsieur le Recteur, pour votre accueil toujours chaleureux et sympathique. Et nous continuerons d'être à votre service au quotidien. Bonne continuation. Merci beaucoup, monsieur le directeur. Pour le moment, euh, la, le bureau de l'Agence universitaire de la francophonie, c'est en Skito Magurano, dans le, le mosquée. Et j'espère que le nouveau bâtiment qui est préparé de notre université sont prêts pour. Euh, pour, le, pour euh, avec, avec plaisir, merci. Pour changer la, le bureau, le place du bureau. Uh, I, I want to thank you so much, uh, Sam, uh, Sam Ambassador. I want to thank you so much, uh, uh, Ambassador of, of Japan in, in Romania, for accepting our invitation to coming here. It's uh, not the first time in our university. Also, uh, Ambassador of uh, Iraq to, for his presence here. Thank you so much, Ambassador. And uh, our colleague, uh, Rector, present here. Thank you so much, Mr. Rector. Um, Now, uh, maintenant, je veux inviter uh, le, le représentant de le, de le bureau de, de l'officier d'émigration et avec notre collègue, le vice-doyen de la faculté d'ingénieur de, de en langue étrangère, M. Nemoyan, pour sa uh, translation ici, uh, pour présenter le premier, uh, premier message. Et après ça, uh, ce n'est pas une conférence classique. Nous sommes prêts euh, avec notre collègue de l'université, le, co le collègue de l'immigration et aussi euh, le, collègue, euh, le collègue de, de euh, Monsieur Ketata pour répondre de votre, de votre question. Merci beaucoup, euh, Madame, je vous en prie.
Bună ziua! Bonjour! Numele meu este Laura Teodor, comisar șef. Je m'appelle Laura Teodor, comisar în uh, șef. Șeful serviciului admisie din cadrul direcției migrație. Le chef du service admission du cadre du bureau d'immigration. Inspectoratul general pentru imigrări. Inspectorat general de dezimigrație. De asemenea, sunt prezenți la această întâlnire și colegii mei, domnul comisar șef Sunt prezent aici, monsieur le comisar en chef. Șeful serviciului returnări din cadrul aceleiași direcții, direcția service de migrație. Retour du même service d'immigration. Și domnul comisar șef Cârdei Ionuț, Monsieur le comisar en chef Cârduț, directorul direcției pentru imigrarea municipiului București, director de l'immigration du Bucarest, din notre municipiu. Uh, voi face o foarte scurtă prezentare. Une brève présentation uh, a inspectoratului general pentru imigrări, de notre inspectorat de imigrație. Uh, care propun și dacă sunteți de acord să ne adresați întrebări și răspundem punctual la ce. Il va y avoir aveți. une session de questions, on peut vous répondre à vos questions ponctuelles. Bien entendu, en rapport aux compétences les plus carrées sur notre notre solaire. Bien entendu, par rapport aux compétences de chaque direction. Inspectoratul general pentru imigrări este o structură specializată, administrație publice centrale. Notre inspectorat est une structure spécialisée de l'administration centrale. Subordonnée au ministère des Affaires Internes. De la part du ministère des Affaires. Avem competențe în ceea ce privește implementarea politicilor în domeniul migrației, asilului, integrării străinilor și celorlalte politici, celorlalte politici în domeniul politic. În materie de migrație, Inspectoratul General pentru Imigrări are competență privind admisia străinilor în România. Nous avons des compétences dans ce qui concerne l'admission des étrangers. Réglementarea șederii cetățenilor statelor terțe. Le règlement de le set du séjour. Du séjour. Exactement, en Roumanie. Réglementarea rezidenței cetățenilor Uniunii Europene și a spațiului economic european. La rezidence dans les espaces européens. Combaterea muncii la negru. La lutte contre le travail Combaterea șederii ilegale. Exactement, combatre uh, le séjour illégal. Și îndepătarea străinilor uh, cetățeni terți de pe teritoriul Elle național. El a reconduit uh, de citoyens étrangers de l'espace roumain. Uh, cadrul legal în materie de migrație este reprezentat de ordonanța 194 pe 2002 privind regimul străinilor în România. Le cadre legal il est représenté par l'ordonnance 194 du gouvernement roumain. Da. În ceea ce privește procesul sau mecanismul de admitere la studii în România. În ce ce concerne mecanismul de admisie la studii în România. Sunt implicate trei ministere. Nous avons impliqué trois ministères. Ministerul uh, Educației Naționale, celui de l'Educație Națională, Ministerul Afacerilor Externe, des Affaires Étrangères, și Ministerul Afacerilor Interne prin Inspectoratul General le, pentru Imigrare. Le Minister des Affaires Internes, Așadar, în tot acest mecanism de admisie a străinilor în scop de studii, um, competențele Inspectoratului General pentru Imigrare sunt limitate. În ce ce concerne l'admisie des étrangers aux études, les compétences sunt limitate. În sensul că admisia, respectiv vizele române, sunt acordate exclusiv de către misiunile diplomatice și oficiile consulare din România, ale le, României, din străinătate. Dans le sens că, le viza sunt acorde par le misiun diplomatic de la România, al etranjei. Competența Inspectoratului General pentru Imigrări în materie de vize. Notre competență dans la materie de viza. Constând doar în emiterea unui aviz consultativ. Consistă la l'acord d'un avis consultatif seulement. La cererile pe care Ministerul Afacerilor Externe le transmite o requête, în format electronic instituției noastre. O requête transmise par le ministère des Affaires étrangères, transmise à notre inspectorat. Prin acest avis consultatif, Inspectoratul General pentru Imigrări constată par cet avis îndeplinirea condițiilor generale și speciale pentru vizele în scop de studii par cet avis notre inspectorat constate l'accomplissement des conditions d'obtention de visa dans diverses conditions spéciales 
Condiții generale, aș enumera câteva, dacă străinii posedă documentele de trecere a frontiere valabile și recunoscute de statul si român. Si les étrangers possèdent les documents nécessaires au passage de la frontière romane. Dacă pe numele străinilor sunt instituite semnalări privind refuzul intrării pe teritoriul spațiului Schengen. Si au nom des étrangers, il y a des restrictions dans ce qui concerne leur admission dans l'espace Schengen. Dacă străinii figurează cu alertă în sistemul național. Si il existe de des avis sur leur nom dans notre système national. Dacă străinii prezintă riscuri de migrație ilegală. Si les étrangers présentent un risque d'immigration illégale. Și bineînțeles condițiile speciale pentru acest tip de viză, pentru viza în scop de studii. Et bien entendu les conditions spéciales pour l'obtention du, vis du visa pour des études. Sunt următoarele, în primul rând străinii cetățeni terți pentru a intra pe teritoriul național trebuie să posede o scrisoare de acceptare. Donc les conditions sont lettres d'acceptation, premièrement, de ministerul euh, Educației Naționale, délivrées par le ministère de l'Éducation Nationale, prin care se rezultă că străinii sunt înscriși la o instituție de învățământ, qui prouve que les étrangers sont inscrits de stat sau particular, acreditată, sau autorizată provizoriu la învățământul cu frecvență, da? Université étatique ou particulière, donc... De asemenea, străinii trebuie să prezinte pentru obținerea vizei în scop de studii dovada mijloacelor de întreținere. Bien entendu, les étrangers doivent présenter qu'ils possèdent les moyens d'entretien, donc les moyens financiers d'entretien. La nivelul salariului mediu brut. Au niveau du salaire moyen brut. Pe țară, pentru, fi, pentru toată perioada înscrisă în viză. Pour toute la période marquée sur le visa. De asemenea, trebuie să prezinte și cazierul judiciar sau uh, alt document cu aceeași valoare juridică. Et aussi le document judiciar concernant dovada taxei de studii pentru cel puțin un an. De l'existence de la taxe, de payé, des études. Și o reglementare nouă introdusă în cadrul nostru legal. Une nouvelle... Dovada... Une nouvelle réglementation introduite récemment dans notre législation. Dovada cunoașteri limbi în care străinul va urma studiile. La preuve que l'étranger connaît la langue utilisée pour l'enseignement dans notre pays. Acestea sunt condițiile speciale și cele generale pe care le-am menționat anterior. Voilà les conditions générales spéciales mentionnées. Pentru a obține o viză în scop de studii pe teritoriul României. Pour l'obtention d'un visa d'étude sur le territoire de la Roumanie. Cereri de viză din partea cetățenilor tunisieni de demande au fost aproximativ 200 de la part de citoyens până la 31 decembrie 2019. De la part de citoyens tunisieni, il y en a eu 200. 200, 200 de demande de la part des citoyens tunisiens. Și un procent de peste 80% au fost avizate în mod favorabil. Et plus de 80% ont été acceptés, ont été avisés favorablement. Subliniez că avizul Inspectoratului General pentru Imigrări, avizul consultativ pentru acest tip de vize, l'avis consultatif de l'inspectorat, conform cadrului legal se liberează în termen de 30 de zile, conformément à la loi et de 30 jours de la data enregistrării în evidență la instituției noastre depuis la date d'enregistrement au niveau de l'institution cu încă 15 zile pentru verificări aprofundate qui peut être prolongé par 15 jours pour des vérifications supplémentaires approfondies iar analiza pe care noi am realizat-o pentru cererile în scop de studii a relevat faptul că et l'analyse effectuée par nous a démontré que Avizul instituției noastre este emis la într un vie, termen mult mai scurt decât cel legal. La vie fournit par notre institution a été donné plus rapidement que le cad, celui prévu par le cadre légal. Cu o durată medie de doar 15 zile. 15 jours environ, une durée moyenne. Repet, subliniez de fapt că este vorba de avizul Inspectoratului General pentru Imigrări. Il s'agit évidemment de la vie fourni par l'inspectorat. Vizele, conform ordonanței 194, vizele se acordă în termen de 60 de zile de mais la data de punerii. Mais les visa, conformément à la loi, sont acordés un term de 60 jours après la requête formulaire. Uh, 
Aceasta înseamnă, pe scurt, care este competența Inspectoratului General de Teritoriul Migrări pe linie de admisie? Voilà, în bref, quelles sont les compétences de l'Inspectorat pour Immigration? Dacă aveți întrebări legate, legate de uh, prelungirea dreptului de ședere, de obținerea permisului de ședere, si vous avez des questions de studii, a formule pour la prolongation de la durée du visa pour des études, de asemenea, de încălcarea regimului juridic al străinilor, care sunt consecințele? Care sunt le consecințe? Si on ne respecte pas la loi, în materie uh, de zetrange? Le puteți adresa colegilor mei? Vous pouvez, și vă răspundem punctual la orice necalitate. Vous pouvez adresa de question et on va vous répondre ponctuellement à chaque question. Inclusiv venit. pe admisie, dacă aveți întrebări, sunt compris, la dispoziția noastră. Dans ce qui concerne l'admission, nous pouvons vous répondre à vos questions. Vă rog. S'il vous plaît, si vous en avez des questions, n'hésitez pas. Da, voi nu știu, nu. Thank you. My name is uh, Hamza Ben Ahmed. I am a thermal system engineer uh, from Tunisia and I'm studying currently in master degree in energy engineering second year. So uh, I heard about an information and I, it's an opportunity to check about if it's allowed for my part to update my residence card after this expiration because uh, all the exams are left now. I'm focusing on my research and I will, I'm thinking to exploit the, my PhD, exploit the training session, exploit for looking for a job and uh, my residence card will be expired in next September. So I heard about that I have right to update my residence card for the, such procedures. Thank you. Um, do you want me to speak in English or in Romania? We have translation, so you... In English it's okay? Yeah, okay. I will try to, to explain a little bit the, the actual procedure and also the possibility that you have in Romania as long as you already enter legally in our country. Yeah? The first, let's say, obligation that you have in Romania is to study. Please remember that. Yeah? For all students, their purpose of entry and stay in Romania is to study. This is why I should tell you from the beginning that the Romanian law is quite strict about it. You have only the possibility to repeat one year. After that year, if you, for example, miss that year and you try to apply for another extension, that will not be granted. So please take that into consideration. The second one is to respect the Romanian law. It's a law that it's not quite easy to read. This is why we are trying in every way to make the publicity about the obligation that you have and also about the rights. At this point, I will try to t talk about the rights that you have because the obligation usually you'll find it <laughs> in another situation. Okay. As long as you hold a residence permit, a valid residence permit, which perhaps some of you already know, it's issued for the entire period of studies, yeah? And like I said, it is possible to only extend it for one year. After that, unfortunately, you have to go back to your country. During that period that you hold that residence permit, you can, you actually have the same right as a Romanian in what regard the protection of the Romanian state. Regarding the possibility to work that you ask, the students are allowed to work only four hours a day, only part-time, because, and I repeat myself in order to be very clear, your first obligation is to study in Romania, not to work and the study to be something, yeah? So you can work four hours a day, maximum 20 hours a week, yeah? It's not a problem, there is no additional requirement. You only have to work legally. That is important. You have to have a work contract which is registered with the competent authorities. The registration is not in your uh, duty, so to speak. It is the employer duty. However, please check your work contracts to be only four hours a day. 
if you have a work contract with eight hours a day, that is a violation of the national labor law and will have the result to expel you because you don't respect your purpose in Romania. Like I said, your purpose is to study. If you work eight hours a day, nobody will believe you that you actually are here to study. Yeah? Okay, that is for the first question. For your question, indeed, we apply the European legislation on students researcher, yeah, which was introduced in our legislation last year. And indeed, we have the possibility for those who are graduated in Romania, who graduated in Romania to extend their residence permit for six months in order to finish their documents rela related to the studies, the approval, the, I don't know, legalization of the diplomas and so on and so on. And also for the researcher and the students, they are the same, they have the possibility to look for a job. In that case, the period is for nine months. Yeah, we will issue a residence permit for nine months, but after six months, you'll have to prove us that you indeed look for a job. Yeah, this is, I, I believe it is okay. Yeah, first we'll give you the six months that are for all students who finished, as long as you prove that you finished the studies. That should be clear that you have your exams and so on and so on. And after that, you'll receive the other three months. If in those six months you prove that, okay, I'm looking for a job, I have the possibility to get a job, because it's one thing to look for a job and other to have the possibility. Please. Uh, my name is Mansouri Ahmed Noor. I'm currently making my master in uh, my, my master's degrees after I finished my uh, four years license as in uh, mechanical engineering. Right now I'm doing industrial engineering. And I want to elaborate what uh, Hamza said about the work permit. So as you said, basically we get six months in order to get our diplomas and finish our, yes. our papers, right? And after that we're going to get only three months, not yes. six months. It's yes. gonna, not a nine months. Basically it's like the, nine months the whole the entire period. All right. So in this car, like the prolongation car, let's call it like that, or does it have a name? Sorry? Does it have a name, this ID car? Like it's a prolongation uh, permit, right? No, it's, it's only the, the residence permit for graduated students. All right. That is the name. The thing is that at this moment, as you said, we are not allowed to work full time. So mostly we're working part time at call centers or whatever. So the question is after getting this uh, paper in the permits, like the permits that you did, it would be like written that we have the right to work full time or not because we, all no. the companies no during that period that you have that residence permit for graduated you are not allowed to work unfortunately in the 6 months in those 6 months yes. like while i'm waiting for my second diploma yeah. even if i'm holding a license that is the romanian diplomas okay so i have only 3 months not 9 months in order to find a job yeah like i said in those in the first 6 months you should already look for that job. Yep. Because the procedure exactly. in order to accept a new person on the labor market in Romania, a full-time work, needs a period around two months mm -hmm. with the documents that the employer should present and with the checks that they are, do, they are made by our, by our institution. So this is why in those three months, the, the documentation already should be applied. Because after that, those nine months, and with that residence permit, you will not have to leave Romania. You can apply directly with the residence permit for work. You understand? Exactly. In order to do that, any company it will be asking me to have a permit already that allows me to work full time. They won't no, hire no, me. No, no, no. Unfortunately, the procedure is the other way around. So First, can the you company elaborate? will. No. The company is not allowed. The Romanian companies are not allowed to hire a third country national without first getting the approval from the Ministry of Interior, from our institution. Exactly. They will have to get first the approval. If they didn't get that approval, uh, it's like not allowed to, to make that contract. They have the Angajari, right? No, it's work authorization, work a visum, approval, permit? something like that. Uh, work permit. No, the work oh. permit is for you. So no. can, you, can you just clarify the situation about this? Okay. And it's the whole thing that everybody is curious about. So. Okay. Thank you. The Romanian law regarding the hiring of the third country national, the non-EU citizens, has two uh, different chapters. The first chapter, it's about the employers. 
yeah, the companies who wants to hire a third country national, they have to uh, present a set of documentation that make us sure that they do, do not abuse the workers. That includes the financial status. We will check if they don't have debts to the to state, to the budget of state. Also, if they paid all the salaries, if they don't have any kind of penalties related to work with illegal migration, with illegal work, without any co work contract, and so on and so on. These are the checks that we make. And if everything is in order, we give them the approval to hire a third country national. Uh, we give them the approval to hire you. Yeah? After we, they get that approval, they can, uh, they can uh, register the work contract full time with you. After they get, they get the, that approval and you uh, had signed the work contract, you can come and ask for the residence permit for work. Yeah? I hope you understand? During those nine months, you are allowed to uh, sign the work contract. Yeah, if you sign the work contract with the full time, after the employer obtained the, that approval, it's okay. You can come to us and request the residence permit for uh, the single permit, it's called actually, according to the directives. Yeah, the residence permit that gives you the possibility to stay in Romania and to work. And also... Diallo, Thierry Mamadouselou, de la Guinée-Conakry, inscrit à l'Université Polytechnique de Bucarest, filière ingénierie industrielle, si, euh, série robotique. Au fait, c'est une suggestion et une question que j'ai. La, la suggestion est la suivante. Nous demandons euh, aux autorités de Bucarest ou des affaires étrangères de travailler en étroite, en étroite collaboration avec les différentes ambassades Euh, pour, pour éviter le retard euh, de l'arrivée des étudiants en Roumanie. Ça, c'est la suggestion. Ma question... Ma question est la suivante. Nous voudrons savoir combien il faut payer exactement à l'immigration concernant les démarches. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, vous partez, on vous dit 2700, demain 2800, donc il n'y a pas un prix fixe pour... L'ouverture du compte. Merci. Répétez, vous, vous parlez de l'indemnité qui est demandée. Vous pouvez répéter la dernière question parce que je l'ai perturbée. Et voilà, nous voulons savoir exactement combien il faut payer à l'ouverture du compte à, à la Banque pour l'immigration. You, you are talking about the proof of meaning of livings? Yeah. Yes, the money that you have yeah. to have in the bank account or, or, just French. or the taxes? Just French. Just in French. Okay. No, my don't know. I don't know. I Perhaps if you can speak in English or something. Bon, moi, personnellement, je n'ai pas été, mais il y a beaucoup de mes camarades qui ont été. Donc, ils ont énorme difficulté par rapport à ça. Yeah, the taxes or... Yeah, the taxes, okay. For the students who are... Uh, who hold a scholarship in Romania, yeah, it's tax-free. Yeah? The person, the students who hold a scholarship from the universities or the Ministry of in, uh, External Affairs and so on and so on, which it's tax-free. The Romanian state will pay for the taxes and also for the residence permit. However, the person who is not a scholarship, who is on his own money, he will have to pay a consular tax, which is 120 euros in, Rouma in lay. It's transferred in lay. And also 259 lay, which is the price of the ID card the manufacturing price of that residence permit. So, yeah. Yeah, the, the actual law for those, we are not talking about the scholarship, yeah? We are talking about those who are on their own money. Okay. The law says that every student should prove that they have the money to support himself for at least six months 
for each month is necessary the minimum wage in Romania. So this year, I believe it's 2,230 lei for each month, for at least six months. So it's, I don't know. Five, six hundred euro per month. Yeah, it's about 600 euros per month. Yeah, and we, if you make it for six months, it's more than 2,000 euro. Yeah, this is why. Okay, so each student should have in their bank account, at least at this point on this year, you should have around, let's say, 3,000, 3,000 and 500 euros in their bank account in Romania, the Romanian bank account, something like that, translated in euros. Uh, okay, I don't know. If, <laughs> okay. if someone did understand, could please <laughs> translate for, for that. Je peux demander la question bah, Je suis Ayoub, donc ça fait six ans que je suis en Roumanie. Donc, euh, je suis master génie industriel. Donc, hier, ma banque BRD m'a bloqué mon compte. Ils ont dit comme quoi j'ai besoin d'un code qui s'appelle INF. Donc, ils m'ont dit donc, de le prendre de, de, de l'ANAF. J'étais aujourd'hui chez l'ANAF. Ils m'ont dit, oh, donc, puisque tu n'es pas roumain, tu n'as pas le droit de le prendre. Et maintenant, mon compte il est toujours bloqué. Ça fait trois jours maintenant. Ils m'ont dit que c'est le service de migration qui doit vous donner ce code-là. INF, donc c'est certificat résident fiscal. Non, donc ils m'ont dit que donc il faut avoir un code qui s'appelle INF. Donc c'est le service d'immigration qui va vous donner ce code-là. Mais puisque ici donc je suis en tant qu'étudiant, donc je dois pas je dois pas payer des taxes, non Mais pourquoi mon compte est bloqué Non. Mais ça fait trois parce que ça fait trois ah. jours que mon compte il est bloqué. Ils me demandent, ils me demandent toujours ce code-là. Vorbește probabil de codul numeric personal, deși cred că a fost format greșit. Părerea mea este că a fost informat greșit. National Identity yeah, yeah, Fiscal. Yeah. No, that is the National uh, Identity Number, National Personal Number, the CNP that we have in Romania. Yeah, you, you are talking about the, the personal number, yeah, which is issued, uh, it's issued in the same time as the residence permit, and it's written on the residence permit. However, the motivation is not that. Non, donc j'ai donné mon, mon carte séjour, ils ont dit donc c'est pas le bon. Donc j'ai besoin de INF, donc c'est le service d'immigration qui doit vous donner ça. Parce que j'étais chez l'ANAF aujourd'hui, donc ils m'ont dit non, donc c'est le service d'immigration. Ben voilà, la banque c'est ici, c'est la polytechnique, donc euh, c'est toujours mon compte, il est bloqué, j'attends une réponse maintenant, ça fait trois jours. We are telling you yeah. that it's not an immigration problem. The immigration office, in your, you have the residence permit on you? Yeah. yeah. Take it out. Non, il est toujours à la banque parce qu'ils ont avec mon passeport. On that residence permit you will see there says it's a personal number code which which has 13 uh, numbers. And it starts with 7 because you are a man. For ladies they start with 8. Donc mais la banque il accepte. That is the identification number which is used also in the financial transaction. Et donc pourquoi la banque il a pas accepté I don't know. Donc je reste avec le compte toujours bloqué donc I don't sait. really know. You should make it in writing and they should give you a writing. D'accord. D'accord. Yeah, because I believe it's something else. D'accord. Uh, hello. I have two questions. The first part that stu student in Romania here he has the right to take an apartment or not. And if yes and he take an apartment when he will leave from here in which situ situation he will be that he will have to sell it with very cheap money and to leave, or he can take a residence for that apartment, or, I don't know, the same for car or anything, that budget of money put it in, putting in that something, in which situation he will have? Unfortunately, it's <laughs> way, way out of our competencies, this question. Really, it's, uh, it's important yeah. for me. I want to I, know. I really don't know how, what to tell you. Okay, thank you no, for this answer. No, we don't. Now, to, to the immigration office, you have to present that you hold legally a place of staying, which can be made indeed with the uh, sale contract no. that you buy an apartment, no. it's okay my, with the My owner. question, if I sell a house today, when I will leave and my residence will done, what, what, in which situation I will be? After three months, my residence will done, for example. Yeah. The house that I have, it, I have to sell it or it can help me with something here or what? No, it will not help you. If you hold the so the house correctly will... the question. 
you're saying that if you have a house in Romania, that allows you to have a residence permit? Okay. That is the question? Yes. No. No. So I have to sell it like with cheaper money or I will lose it? No, you it. can change your purpose in Romania. But like owning a house no. is not a reason to stay in Romania. Okay. Clear. Yeah, it's a real estate investment, so no. Mm -hmm. No. Thank you. No. Good afternoon. My name is um, Giatu Kangen James, coming from Cameroon, first year at um, IT. So my question is, you say that uh, when we have the permit, we have the right to work for us since we are students. And during the holidays, since we have full time for us. No. Nope. No. The residence permit will allow you to work only four hours a day. Even during the holidays? Even during the holidays. Yeah. Okay. That is the law. It is quite difficult to make some adjustment during the holiday because otherwise we, it will be an administrative burden that nobody can handle because the holidays are different. You have the winter holiday, the intersemestral holiday. I don't know how many holidays. It is quite difficult. So the law stayed strict on that. You have to work only four hours a day. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Sorry. I don't know. No, it's depending on each state, it's the European directive actually allows us to do that. Yeah. Uh, no, I know it, it's, it's not normal. However, it's the law and it should be clear because otherwise they will. You, for example, you have holiday for one week and two days. You make a work contract with eight hours for one week and two days. The bigger holidays, I don't know. If you have an exam, you are still in holiday or you are not on holiday. Yeah, there are a lot of things, and it is better to be clear. It's only four hours a day maximum, and that's it. It's simple. It's easy to check, easy to know, easy in every way. Please, sorry. Uh, bonsoir. Je m'appelle Imam Abdallah. Je suis une Marocaine fille. Uh, mon question, c'est pour obtenir le quartier jour, c'est obligé d'avoir un compte bancaire. Mon problème, c'est que je suis mineure et aucun banque euh, veut m'ouvrir le compte. Euh, ça fait quatre mois que je suis là. Euh, je, je passe chez vous et ils m'ont dit que euh, c'est obligé d'avoir, euh, euh, obligé que mes parents viennent ici. Ce problème, c'est que mes parents peuvent pas venir ici. Euh, S'il vous plaît, est-ce que vous avez une solution pour eux? Indeed, this is quite a tricky situation and we don't have a lot. They are allowed around two years. And each one, we treat it uh, differently according to the documentation and the age that you have actually have on the moment that you applied. Yeah, it's a little, how, when you became minor, uh, major? When you uh, will reach 18? S'il te plaît, est-ce que tu peux parler en français? Parce que... Que... Quand est-ce que vous êtes majeur, mademoiselle? Uh, moi, de, le 13, moi, de. 13? Mois de février. In 13 February, she will have uh, yeah. major. We don't have a problem. <laughs> For like I said, it's okay. You can come. You do, you don't have the residence permit at this point. No. 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 Okay, you can come and request the residence permit. And during the application, yeah, you will become major, and you have the possibility to make that bank account, because they are quite difficult situation. According to the Romanian law, you are a minor unaccompanied his manner. And you need the approval for the parents, and this is why perhaps my colleague told you that they need to come here to Romania in order to do everything. However, if you became a major person during this uh, period that we analyze your application, you can bring the documentation during this application and we will analyze it also. Like I said, each case is different, and it's analyzed in a different manner. She said that uh, to make the application, she need to get that uh, statement that proved that she had uh, that kind of money that you speak about just uh, right now. Yeah. And uh, for that, she need to have a statement from an account. But the problem for her is uh, there is no bank uh, want to open her an account. She will, of course, because she's a minor. This yeah. is why I'm telling you. At this point, she can come to us explaining that in a written form. Okay, I'm a minor at this point. On the 13th of February, I will become a full-grown person, according to the Romanian law. After that, she can open the bank account and prove with documents that she holds the money. At this point, I believe that she will have it in her pocket or something like that. Uh, okay. Yeah? Okay. And we, during the...
process of analyzing her situation, she can come with the documents attesting, okay, at that point I was a minor, now I'm a major, and look, I have the money, please take the bank account, and we will take it into consideration. Yeah. That is an answer at this point. Like I said, each case is analyzed based on the documents that, she, that you present. Yeah? Uh, it's not the actual <laughs> the thing that will happen. Each case is analyzed separately. Yeah? This is the general approach that I'm telling you about. We will see exactly based on your documents that you present to us. Yeah? Uh, bonsoir à tous. Uh, mon, mon nom c'est Fort Moi Camille Cédric. Je suis d'origine camerounaise. Je suis étudiant en troisième année ici. En fait, je voulais savoir uh, premièrement pourquoi pour les étudiants étrangers qui se sont venus étudier en, en Roumanie, la procédure de visa, elle est très longue et les ambassades ont parfois, le, ils nous font passer énormément de temps pour nous uh, fournir le visa, par exemple. J'ai trois questions. Pour être, ça c'est la première. Why? Parce que normalement, en fait, lorsqu'on paye les frais d'inscription par virement bancaire, on a la preuve du paiement. Mais par exemple, lorsque on va à l'ambassade pour l'entretien du, du, du visa, moi, par exemple, mon cas, la première année quand je suis arrivé en Roumanie, la date de mon visa, elle, elle datait de, de deux semaines auparavant, mais le, le consul à l'ambassade nous a donné le visa deux semaines plus tard. Et je me, reçois, je me suis retrouvé à faire presque un mois dans un pays étranger pour obtenir un visa. Pourtant, j'ai rempli toutes les conditions qu'il fallait. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, like my colleague said in, at the beginning of this discussion, it is quite difficult to answer for another institution. We, the General Inspector for Immigration, only deals with the person who are in Romania. Regarding the request for a visa, my colleague already told you that we only analyze the person, okay. not the case. We see that if that person had the problem with the Romanian state before. That is the a, a, a visa that we give the, to the embassy. However, the embassies are actually the only one who can deal with that situation. And unfortunately, the Minister of Foreign Affairs if is not here today. We, we cannot give you an answer on that. Only the Minister of Foreign Affairs can ask you answer you that. So we know that there are problems with, with the embassy, however, they are out of our reach, so to speak. Okay, uh, Ensuite, uh, en ce qui concerne les droits des étudiants en Roumanie, vous avez dit précédemment que tous les étudiants qui sont, qui, uh, qui, nous tous en fait qui sont présents en Roumanie, on a les mêmes droits que, que, que les Roumains en fait. Mais lorsqu'on essaye de faire quelque chose ici, si vous êtes étranger, on ne vous permet pas de le faire. On va vous demander est-ce que vous êtes Roumain Or, vous, vous venez de dire à l'instant qu'on qu a tout tous les mêmes droits que nos que les étudiants roumains en fait comme nous, mais c'est pas le cas, c'est vraiment différent. Vous pouvez donner un exemple concret Voilà un exemple complet. Mon, mon camarade de, de tout à l'heure, moi j'ai eu le, le même problème pas par exemple, j'avais un souci avec la banque, euh, ils m'ont demandé, euh, je suis allé avec le TNP, ils ont refusé, ils m'ont dit que c'est pas légal, j'ai été obligé de fermer mon compte, changer de banque. Je leur ai donné le TNP, ils m'ont dit que c'est pas le cas, ils vous disent allez à l'immigration. C'est en fait la, la réponse ici, c'est les autorités roumaines du ministère de l'Intérieur. Ils n'ont aucune euh, compétence sur les, les banques. They should give you that in writing and please come to us. We will make them a statement. Okay, make that, come to us and I will give you in writing also that they are idiots. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I know that there are some services yeah. in the banks. They don't know anything about this yeah, work. Yeah. And we will give them in writing. It's not a problem. Okay. But first you should come with us, with that denial, on writing. Bon, j'ai une autre question. En ce qui concerne la fin des études, vous avez dit, vous nous donnez en fait six mois pour finaliser toute notre documentation à l'école. Maintenant, quand vous donnez trois mois pour qu'on cherche, en fait, vous avez dit pendant les neuf mois, on doit commencer à chercher du travail, mais... Pendant ce temps, puis ça, avec la, la, la carte que vous, que vous allez nous, nous donner pour nous permettre de rester neuf mois, aucune compagnie en Roumanie ne va accepter de discuter avec vous si vous n'avez pas un, un permis de séjour qui vous permet de travailler. Parce qu'ils vont toujours vous demander si vous avez une carte de séjour. 
qui vous permet de travailler full time. I will repeat. Okay. I already answered the, the question to your colleague over there. You are not allowed to work full time until, uh, until the company obtains the approval. The company that told you they will not hire you if you don't have the work permission, they don't want to hire you actually. Yeah, but they they okay. tossed away your application, so they don't want to do those okay, I checks. Like I told you, we check the, the companies. If they want, don't want for us to find out that they're not quite the best company, they will actually avoid, or avoid to exactly. actually. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, so it's not question, it's a request for your part also for the Tunisian Embassy Department. Uh, last year I was coming to Romania in order to uh, apply and to start my master studying and I were applying for the residence card. One of the procedures is to open an account. Okay, so seven, eight agency will refuse my application. The, the reason is my country were in blacklist. So unfortunately, how can, how can I protect or for not for um, not only for me, for all the Tunisian, for all the Tunisian um, students, how can simplify these procedures? Because we have arrived here and we have paid our taxes and we have paid our residence. After that, the bank refused my application to open an account in order to establish for the residence card. That's a little bit uh, make us a little bit worried. How can I? How can we simplify the procedures to make an exceptional procedures for the students that have come here? and to simplify for them how to, to open that account and to make the procedure so faster for the residence card. Thank you. We are, we are still talking about it. We are trying to find a solution for that. Yeah, we know that is a problem and the banks with the countries that are on so-called blacklist related to money laundering and terrorism and so on and so on, we know that they actually don't open a, a bank account if they ha don't have the residence permit in Romania, which cannot be obtained if you don't have the bank account. So we are trying to, yes, we are trying to find a solution to that problem. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it's a legislation problem, and we have to mm -hmm. tackle the, the legislation on that. Okay. Uh, en réponse à votre question concernant, uh, en fait, la difficulté d'ouvrir des comptes bancaires uh, ici en Roumanie, uh, en fait, et, uh, parce qu'il y avait beaucoup de, de requêtes euh, de la part des étudiants tunisiens. Donc, la semaine prochaine, euh, le 29, j'aurai un rendez-vous avec le, le gouverneur de la Banque centrale parce que c'est lui le seul qui, va, qui peut trancher euh, pour ce sujet, pour les étudiants. Et on va voir après quelle, quelle sera la solution pour vous. Parce que pas mal d'étudiants, pas mal, mais, ce n'est pas même les étudiants, même d'autres personnes, des ressortissants ici, qui ont ce problème. Donc, on va voir... Euh, pour ce problème, c'est vrai que la Tunisie, c'était parmi les pays non coopératifs, donc la, la blacklist, la liste noire, c'est autre chose. Là, en fait, il faut respecter la réglementation, les procédures. Nous sommes en train de, de, nous sommes en train de travailler pour, sur ce sujet, mais pour votre sujet, là, pour euh, l'ouverture des comptes, euh, Inch'Allah, on aura une solution avec euh, les banques. Donc, et même n'hésitez pas de, euh, de s'adresser euh, à l'ambassade si vous avez des, si vous avez des problèmes comme ça. Par exemple, le BLD ou bien vous pouvez nous contacter pour vous aider, même par un coup de fil, on pourra voir c'est quoi la solution. Oui, oui. Oui, oui, je sais, mais c'est pour, en fait, pour cette phrase que je vais contacter le gouverneur de la Banque centrale. La semaine prochaine, ça sera le 29, euh, j'ai un rendez-vous avec lui, donc il euh, ne faut pas dire euh, toujours, voilà, votre pays, c'est comme ça. Sont, on peut dire ce sont les procédures comme ça, voilà. Mais euh, c'est vrai, c'est un peu... Euh, oui, oui, merci beaucoup. Euh, les conditions de, de renouvellement de séjour et les, euh, les procédures, c'est vous, oui, et vous, c'est le, le retour, c'est le retour, c'est pour éviter le retour. Oui, c'est ça. Ok. So my colleague, it's actually the one that deals with those who don't comply with the legal requirements, requirements, 
Uh, he's the last person you will see when you leave Romania if you don't uh, behave, so to speak. You will try to. Bună <laughs> ziua. Uh, sunt de la Centrul Cultural European Român în Arab. Uh, înainte de a veni cu o propunere, poate să fie utilă, uh, vreau să felicit și ambasada Tunisiei, respectiv doamna ambasador al Tunisiei, pentru această inițiativă importantă și la fel prezența dumneavoastră și toți cei prezenți. Uh, după titlul care ne uitam și după ce facem astăzi, eu vorbesc în calitate și de fost absolvent al Universității de România, respectiv Vestecarul Davila din București, și un cunoscător al problemelor studențești, că am activat foarte mult și în timpul sânții în Liga de Studenți și de probleme studențelor străini și toate activitățile care le făceam noi în cadrul facultății. Dar vreau să vă spun ceva. Noi am participat de centrul nostru la foarte multe simpoziane și mese rotunde și conferințe și am organizat, organizat acest lucru. Lucram și cu CNRU, cu Consul Național al Rectorului, prin un protocol. Uh, am o propunere pentru dumneavoastră, ca să o lungesc. Propunerea este în felul următor. Pentru studenții care vin în România străini, aleg România pentru mai multe scopuri și mai multe motive. Că e țara frumoasă, țara de pace și poporul este un popor foarte pretenșios și foarte amabil. Acest lucru trebuie să fie reflectată și nu în viața de zi de zi, în societate și în facultate, și în, în colaborare cu instituțiilor în tema, în referența pentru viața lor care o vin. Întotdeauna când am participat, ori lipsește un reprezentanț care este foarte important la o instituție anume, care trebuie să asculte și ei să ne spună punctul de vedere, ca să nu mai ascultăm cuvântul că aparține această problemă Ministerul tare cu tare sau Departamentul tare cu tare. Acest lucru a fost prezent aproape în 90% de ceea ce am fost prezenți noi și ce am organizat. Și nu mi-e rușine să spun aici, mai mult este vorba de Ministerul Învățământului, care trebuia să fie prezent și astăzi și pe care joacă un rol foarte important, fiindcă noi vorbim de studenți. Eu propun, ca să nu lungesc, și fac și o paranteză, cred că este și o colegă aici de la uh, Uniunea Europeană, care am mai fost și noi, suntem membri în Coaliția Națională de Refugiați, am în două instituții, tot așa am avut probleme numai discutând că există și reprezentant al instituției, nu există, nu poate să vorbească cei de la interne ce se întâmplă în educație și așa mai departe pentru celelalte instituții. Eu vă fericit și colega dumneavoastră, doamna inspector, care a spus că a dat divizile și mai devreme, și acest lucru înseamnă că v-a făcut datorie după ce am auzit. Ce propun eu în felul următor? Dumneavoastră, în politici pe care le aveți, și așa am auzit noi că aveți politici, includeți, dacă nu include Ministerul Învățământului sau alte ministere mai importante pentru studenții care vin aici în România și trebuie să oferim un climat și un mediu relaxat pentru a învăța și pentru a fi ambasador mai târziu a României, în, stare, în țară lor, dacă pleacă sau dacă rămân aici, vreau să vă spun în felul Includeți că fiecare an există în fiecare universitate birou de străini. Birou de străini are un rol important. Există și reprezentanți alte ministere, creat și ale primăriei, care trebuie să fie o comisie din fiecare an să vină reprezentant de la imigrare, de la externe, de la interne, de la educație, de la primării și de la universitatea respectivă nu știu, virul străi, prorector, rector, ce consideră ei. Să discute fiecare an, să oblige aproape cei care nu vin, nu vin, dar ei zic că preferă să fie obligatorii acesta așa, fiecare an, când începe anul universitar, domne, drepturi și obligații, de la muncă, de la învățământ, de la chirie, de la banca, de la viza, de la încărcare de lege, de la aia, de la aia, de toate feluri. Și toată lumea este prezentă. Și fiecare om notează și spune ce are de spus și studenții de la început știu ce au? 
Unii termină la facultate și încă întreabă ce dreptor am, ce trebuie să fac, chiar când trebuie să ridice diplomă, licența și așa mai departe. Deci vă rog frumos, poate dumneavoastră, că sunteți mai prezenți și mai activ în tema asta, includeți această politică în dumneavoastră pe care se transmite oficial pe cale oficială pentru celălalt, așa ca să se termină acest lucru pe care, indiferent, că sunt, sunt probleme. Noi ne confruntăm și noi cu probleme. Vin foarte mulți membri și simpatizanți și studenți la noi că am probleme aia, probleme aia. Ne miram că există instituții. Dar unde? Instituții, mă rog, vorbesc când sunt probleme, nu vorbesc de probleme normale și rezolvate. Și le nerezolvate. Deci unde? Și problema minge, ca la fotbal, interne sau educații la interne, interne la externe, și, de exemplu, nu vreau să zic, dar celălalt. Eh, sau primărie, sau chiar la universitate poate cu toată problemă, în interiorul universității. Deci acest lucru vă rugăm foarte mult, facilitați foarte mult munca dumneavoastră și altor instituții și imagine României pentru ei nerezolvate, fiindcă legile sunt clare și lucrurile sunt clare, dar un student nu știu, nu știu. Chiar dacă vorbesc engleză, franceză sau chiar a care cei care vorbesc românește, până să învețe limba română bine, ajunge anul 3. Deci asta este adevărul. Deci vă rog frumos, poate incluze și la politica și o să vedeți că lucrurile vor merge și mai bine. Vă mulțumesc foarte mult! Da. O să am eu un răspuns la chestia asta care nu cred că vă o să vă placă. Deja de, cred că sunt patru ani de când Inspectoratul General pentru Imigrare a trecut printr-o schimbare destul de importantă și nu știu, acum poate dumneavoastră n-ați observat tot, dar credeți-mă că deschiderea noastră către toți, toate persoanele care sunt în România și am participat cam la toate întâlnirile, simpozioane, conferințe, am fost inclusiv la Liga Moldovenilor că au făcut-o, nu știu ce bar, că nu vrea să trezească foarte dimineață și le era rău. Și m-am dus și acolo, ok, mă duc o oră, pot să-mi sacrific. Când s-a putut. Însă, referitor la cooperarea cu alte instituții, am avut, de exemplu, în fiecare an, noi facem de două ori pe an, la începutul anului universitar și undeva la începutul semestrului 2, facem întâlniri cu studenții în facultăți, cu și domnii de la Politehnică pot să confirme, că le avem anual, cu studenții. Vreți să știți că studenți vin de fapt la ele? Vă pot spune că la cea... Să nu dau aici, dar politehnică, nu mai știu exact ce au fost, dar parcă la arhitectură, noi eram 10 reprezentanți de instituții și au venit exact doi studenți. Doi. Au fost făcute și publicitate, și pe site, am pus și pe uși, deci credeți-mă, nu tot timpul. Acum, probabil, se trebuie de doamna ambasadoare. Sincer, părerea mea este că au venit cam mulți. Dar nu este chiar așa mare interes. Din păcate... Da, nu știm abordări. De, de asta am și spus, noi încercăm să mergem în mediul pe care dumneavoastră poate îl, să, nu știu, îl, la dumneavoastră poate vin cu mai multă încredere. Suntem de acord să venim la solicitarea dumneavoastră și să facem întâlniri cu ei. Ok, ce probleme aveți? Să vedem dacă putem găsi soluții. Că... Deci vă pot spune că numai în audiențele pe care le țin miercuri am undeva în jur de 20 de persoane în două ore. Deci este un fel de bandă rulantă și chiar explic oamenilor tot ce pot să facă, pe toate problemele pe care le au, chiar mă străduiesc să îi învăț să-și rezolve problema. Nu mă interesează în mod deosebit să le explic care este temeiul legal. Aia e simplu, că o citesc undeva. Raportat la situația fiecăruia, ce anume se poate face. Chiar ne străduim, să știți, chiar ne străduim. Acum că unii vor să coopereze cu noi mai mult, și mă refer la instituții, nu la persoane, vor să coopereze cu IGI mai mult, mai puțin. Noi suntem poliție, ceilalți sunt în mediul civil. La noi sunt niște reguli, niște regulamente, suntem destul de verticali. Da, ceilalți, unii sunt diplomați. Au altă abordare strategică asupra lumii. Unii sunt de la Ministerul Educației, sunt foarte educați, iarăși au alte abordări. Nu ne putem pronunța chiar pe... Merci, euh, M. Dirard, pour euh, votre intervention. Ce que j'ai compris de M. Ketat, que vous avez proposé qu'il y aura un guichet unique. C'est vrai, c'est la proposition de l'ambassade, donc avec euh, les responsables euh, romains, avec les, les, les différents ministres de l'éducation romaine et euh, les ministres des affaires étrangères. 
C'est aussi la proposition de l'ambassade que, que c'est la création d'un... Vous avez des guichets uniques, euh, guichets uniques comme m'a yeah, a, a traduit M. Keta. On dit nous, toujours on propose euh, une structure d'accueil pour les étudiants, une structure qui, qui englobe tous les intervenants tous les intervenants, le ministère des Affaires étrangères, l'éducation, le euh, ministère de l'Intérieur, la, les migrations. En fait, c'est vrai parce que ça, ça vous évite, ça évite les étudiants de, en fait, on, disons pas, d'être de, de, tiraillés entre les différents intervenants, les différents responsables, comme ça, même pour accélérer le temps et même pour comprendre les lois, comme les, en fait, la question de l'étudiant tunisien. En fait, avec la banque, la, le code, le code, le code chez INF, INF, code chez NEP. En fait, c'est vrai d'avoir une structure qui englobe tous les, les intervenants. C'est pour faci leur faciliter la vie ici. En fait, et eux ici, ils sont pour un moment. On se prend bien que pour une autre, <rire> pour, parce que la majorité, ils voulaient aussi euh, trouver un travail. Mais eux ici, pour une période bien déterminée, en espérant bien que cette période soit facile, soit soit très à l'aise pour eux pour euh, avoir leur diplôme et retourner euh, pour leur, leur pays. Je vais essayer de faire un joke à ce point. C'est assez difficile d'aller avec une nouvelle voiture très, très rapide, même si vous mettez un kérosène. Nous avons beaucoup de bonnes idées. Elle ne va pas aller. Malheureusement, notre infrastructure est ce qu'elle est, pour le dire. Good. It is quite well, difficult at this point when we don't have our own offices. We stay each institution of, in Romania, they stay in small offices in all their houses who are about to crash. It was, and it was, it was. Yeah, now yeah, it's, uh, it was. No, it, it, now. it's still, it's <laughs> still, because trust me, we are staying in a house that it will collapse soon. And my colleague, or, they already evicted from one building that we do parallel of actually crashing down. So it's quite difficult to get everyone in the same place. It's quite difficult to talk with everyone because we are so split it that it's quite difficult to get together the, the people in the same institution, not talking about the old institution. It's quite difficult. So we are trying, we are trying. We are trying, we have, we have access European funds. We are trying to make everything online, which is another question for the students. Why don't you use the web tools that the immigration office has. It is actually disturbing for me to see that only 20% of the students who we are supposing that they are qualified, they have studies, they don't use the web tools. And I saw here today, to our, even now, with the telephones. It's quite disturbing for me. You are in a era of the technology. Yeah? We have the web tools, we are trying to develop them. If you don't, do, don't use it, we are talking about getting together. It's, so please help us to help you. Which is, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting since like <coughs> two, three. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I have uh, only two or three questions. Not that much. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> one by one. <laughs> one by one. Uh, so the first one, um, for example, one person who is working here in uh, in a company and uh, need to change the company, or he want to change the company, maybe because he have a better offer or stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So um, the new company have to uh, to get the approval. Yeah. Re redo all the papers for him? No, it's a simplified procedure. Yeah? yeah. So we don't have like uh, that amount of months to declare before uh, changing the... Um, no, because I heard no. about three months. Like you need... Uh, if you want to change the, co the company, you, you have three months just to go to the immigration to tell that you want to change. Uh, if you don't do this, you have to come back to your country and redo the visa. Uh, I have an example here of uh, persons that went to Tunisia because he just wanted to change the company. And when he changed the company, uh, the new company uh, went to the immigration to 
put the papers and have the avis de Monca yeah. for him. And uh, the immigration told him that he need to come back to Tunisia and redo the visa from the beginning. No. Yeah. No. Trust yeah. me. In Bucharest. No. <laughs> no. You ask the wrong person. I don't know. No, it's not about proving. The, the, actually, the purpose of work is the only, not the only, because the Romanian uh, family members also can do that. It is the only purpose that can be accessed with any kind of long-term visa in Romania. If you are a student, if you obtain the approval to work in Romania, yeah, the company will obtain the avis, and also after that you can apply directly for the residence permit for work. If your residence permit already expired, of course, the company cannot uh, register a work contract with the people, with the person who is illegally staying in Romania. That will give them a fine. I don't know exactly what was the situation in your case, but we will talk face to face. I, I will try to understand. Because, no. 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 During your, the Romanian law says something like that. <coughs> During the validity of the residence permit for work, for the single permit, the, pers the holder can change employer only if the new employer obtain work approval, that avis, yeah? And after that, they can register the work contract. I don't know what information, and if the company told you that, no, it shouldn't be, no. No, we didn't have any kind of cases. We have cases of rejection, the uh, uh, application for the new avis, if the residence permit was already expired, like I said, it's not change of employee if you don't have the right to work in Romania. Yeah. So there are something, some problems, I believe, somewhere. But I, I will talk with you in person. Uh, the permit, uh, my permit, the Shidir, is not expired, but I changed the company, and uh, the new company they send the file in internet, the first one. And uh, before one month and a half, we have a negative response. In one if and a half month? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the deadline is 30 days. And okay. we don't give negative response online, from the application online. I don't know. So For, uh, at this point, it's, I don't know, three or four week, uh, days in order to analyze the documentation that they put online. In one and a half month, no. Even if they put them physically at the office. I, I believe it's something else there. Peut-être qu'ils veulent, ils veulent pas de vous. Non. Euh, en fait, moi, j'ai envoyé la, euh, la compagnie, l'a envoyé la réponse, euh, le premier demande en ligne. Mais on a attendu plus qu'un mois après, on a un échou pour la réponse. Après, ils ont pris le dossier pour euh, mettre physiquement à l'immigration. Ils m'ont dit qu'il faut que je retourne à la Tunisie pour faire un nouveau visa parce que j'ai trois mois pour rester en Roumanie si je quittais la, la première compagnie. Non. Exactement, c'est ça que se passe. Ce que c'est illégal de compagnies. Ce n'est pas OK. Non, ça ne devrait pas in Bucharest. Are you sure that it was in Bucharest? Yes, in Bucharest. No. no. Yeah, uh, it's in Bucharest and uh, he was working in the yeah. same company of mine, like now. Uh, what was that company? Uh, Amaris. Amaris. Amaris Consulting, Amaris, yeah. Amaris, yes. Yeah. Uh, like he, he was working with Voban. And the new company? Uh, Amaris Consulting, the new uh, company and the last company is Voban. Voban uh, IT, I know. Yeah, they Voban they IT, hire exactly. Uh, so he, uh, and he Amaris wants to hire you with the full time? Uh, yeah. No. So when he, uh, when he went from uh, Vauban, uh, he went to Amaris to sign the contract. Uh, Amaris uh, spent like two months to get the Avis de Monca. Uh, they get the, Amis, uh, the Avis de Monca for me, and uh, for him, he received the, like, uh, they told him that he have to come back to Tunisia and redo visa again. We don't know why, no. but it's like this. Your residence permit is still valid? Yeah. There is something wrong. It's something else. There is something, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I will check personally. Okay, the second question is, uh, like it's not a question, is uh, 
just in information. Uh, if people like have an um, uh, undetermined contract and they have uh, permis de cedere, uh, why we have or, uh, always permis de cedere for one year? Even if we have like uh, uh, a contra undetermined contract, it will be easier for us and for the immigration to give us like, for example, three, three years or two years to not come back every year to the immigration to redo the President papers. Permit for two years. Unfortunately, they are only for highly qualified person. Are not junior. Yeah, the one that have a lot of money. And also we give for three years, for example, for yeah. those who are transferred intracorporeal. Yeah. Which is not the case. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't have a yeah, that is the European directive. Uh, okay. Yeah. Regarding the blue card directive, if you heard about, about it. Yeah, yeah, blue it's card, about the yeah. highly qualified workers. Yeah. So if give them two years and for the regular worker we give them three years, <laughs> how it will be? Because we cannot give the, the highly qualified four years. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the directive actually stops us at that Deadline. Yeah, and so, uh, no. uh, anyway, we will have the experience and we will be. Uh, yeah, yeah. After <laughs> how we will meet every year. We don't, <laughs> yeah. No, no worry. And no. Uh, the we last. We are trying to find some ways yeah. for the companies who had a lot of workers, for example, to find some ways in order to cooperate better on that point. But at this point, like I said, we are still struggling to yeah. deal with the smaller <laughs> problems. <laughs> The, the last question, the, is, uh, the last question uh, is uh, like uh, I have so many uh, colleagues asking me about this, uh, about the changing of address. Uh, like uh, we had uh, many issues about uh, uh, people that changed the address and didn't go to immigration to declare that they changed the address and they had to pay an amount for this. So uh, if we change the address, uh, we have a period of time to go to decry, 30 declare. Yeah? 30 days, one month. 30 days. So in those 30 days, if we don't you go to immigration... You have to come and request the new residence permit because the address is changing on your residence permit. Yeah. It's a simple file procedure. You will only have to come with the passport, the new rent contract, yeah, and the tax for the, the residence permit, yeah. the 259 name. So that's it. Okay. it Thank you so much. And of course, the lines at the desk they are the same, yeah, yeah. the huge ones, <laughs> but... Uh, Je suis euh, Nguno, Steve, maintenant du Cameroun. Je n'ai pas une question, mais une doléance. Une Une doléance. Bon, ma doléance, ça s'adresse particulièrement au directeur euh, de la faculté d'ingénierie de langue étrangère de UPB. Je ne sais pas s'il est là. Now, bon. you, you have to understand that we took French like six weeks during the Romanian presidency for the EU, so we understand the French, but very, very slowly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> bon, compte tenu de, de tous les problèmes que nous avons euh, écoutés ici, euh, ma doléance, c'est laquelle? My, my les étudiants, il y a des étudiants qui continuent d'arriver à UPB, ils sont en retard. Bon, la faute n'est pas à l'administration, ni aux étudiants. Ouais. Bon, mais l'étudiant est pénalisé parce que au niveau de, du suivi des, des cours, il est en retard. Il arrive parfois, on a déjà fait des, des partiels. Bon, ce que j'aimerais, c'est que si le directeur pouvait, avec ses enseignants, euh, voir comment organiser des sessions de rattrapage ou bien du de donner une autorisation de faire des partiels à, à des nouveaux arrivants, ça serait à notre avantage quand même. Bon, c'est ça. En fait, votre question concerne bien l'organisation universitaire et M. Daillé est à votre disposition. Biro, je viens de la Guinée-Conakry. Je veux revenir... De quel pays de La Guinée-Conakry. Okay. Je veux revenir sur la question de mon confrère guinéen qui est là, en concernant euh, l'obtention de la carte de séjour. Euh, hier, moi, je suis parti euh, euh, au service d'immigration. Euh, J'avais euh, 2800 euros comme relevé bancaire. Euh, donc, euh, ce qui fait 13 000, 
160, mais j'ai mis 13 200 lait. Lorsque j'ai fourni euh, mon relevé bancaire, ils m'ont dit euh, qu'ils ont besoin de 13 380 lait, ce qui dépasse les 2 800. Et euh, j'ai une petite nuance concernant parce que la lettre d'admission qu'on reçoit, elle vient du ministère de l'Éducation. Et dans cette lettre, il est écrit 2 500 dollars. Et si on part au service d'immigration, on tire un relevé bancaire qui dépasse les 2 500 dollars, on a un relevé bancaire de 2 800, alors qu'on nous dit aussi d'aller augmenter plus que ça. Là, je n'arrive plus à comprendre parce que j'ai eu plusieurs de mes amis qui ont eu ce même problème. Euh, ils ont délivré euh, 13 200. Ils leur ont dit de partir encore refaire un relevé de 13 400, ce qui dépasse les, les 2 800. Et je ne sais plus maintenant où se donner de la tête concernant ça. C'est-à-dire que le problème concerne 200 lait de différence Oui, 200 lait de différence. 13, 13. It's stipulated in the law. We cannot derogate any, even for one lay. If one lay is missing. Vous allez arriver à je ne sais pas 13 000 et je ne sais pas combien. Et ça, vous, 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 vous devez vous présenter au service d'immigration avec votre relevé bancaire pour euh, renouveler euh, de la carte de sujet. Ok, euh, ce que je n'arrive pas à comprendre, parce que la plupart des étudiants venus de l'étranger se basent sur la lettre d'admission. Parce que cette lettre d'admission, elle dit que l'étudiant doit avoir 2500 dollars. Et au, ah, ok. Ok, ben bon, euh, ce que je n'arrive pas à comprendre, même euh, avant d'entrer à, à l'aéroport, euh, on nous demande plus que les 2500 dollars. On nous demande 2700, 2700. Alors... Ok, c'est bon, merci. Je ne sais pas about this 2500 US dollars, je ne sais pas où c'est ce moment. Je ne sais pas si c'est une taxe scolaire. C'est une taxe de studie. C'est une taxe de studie. Non, 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 non. Ok, une dernière question, si c'est possible, parce que... Une dernière question. Bonjour. Euh, je voulais savoir pourquoi, euh, lorsqu'un étudiant décide de changer d'université, il est obligé de retourner dans son pays d'origine pour pouvoir refaire, euh, de demander le visa à nouveau. Professionals or the speciality. speciality. If you change it, and the entire period of study, it's longer than the one that you are previously approved. You have to go home and request a new yeah, visa. visa. I agree with that one. But uh, I have a friend. We were together. I think it was last year or the year before. He was okay with his resident permit because he left Polytechnica when he was in the first year. So mm -hmm. he, he didn't went to the second year. He went to yeah. Romana Americana. Okay. There is three years. Yeah. So he, he still had three years in, in his resident card. But the, the immigration council is re, re, resident permit and they send him back to Nigeria. And he's trying to come back since to continue the study, but 
they didn't give him, give him the visa first of all the first year. They refused, but I want to know why they sent him back there because he still had like the three years you just mentioned covering the, the, the studies in Romana Americana because there is three years to, to get the bachelor degree. So that, that's what I, I don't understand. They sent him back. I, I really didn't understand the, the question. You are telling that a student who holds a residence permit for Politehinga, which was for five years, I believe, no? No, it, it was for four years because he was studying here in Politehinga. Four, four years. He started to study at the uh, Ecological or the... Uh, Roman American. Uh, Romanian American University, second, yeah, yeah. which was for three years. Yes, yes exactly. normally the residence permit should stay the same yeah. if he notified, because the Politehinga notified us that He's not longer a student here. Yeah. If he doesn't come to us and to, uh, tell us, okay, I moved to another university, we don't know that. But because the university does, don't notify us about the new students. Okay. And after that, we canceled the residence permit because he was no longer a student in Politehnica. We didn't know that he was a student in other. And after that, everything is done. Once the decision is made, it's made. Okay. Only the court of justice can cancel that. So that was his problem. He didn't came to us to tell us, okay, it, it was not a problem about changing the university. It was a problem that he didn't tell us so we can keep him his residence permit valid. That was the problem, I believe. Okay. Otherwise, it shouldn't be any kind of problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The last question for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, please come, the two of you, uh, on Wednesday at 10 o'clock in Nikolai Yorga. I will talk with both of you, yeah, about your problem and also the question that you have. I have to take my children from school, so please <laughs> don't. Yeah? Thank you. Okay.